welcome to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Entertainment Network. I am your host, Sarah. I have another great author interview to bring you today. I hope that you are having a great day. Um, As we get started, I would like to remind you to like, subscribe, follow on whatever platform you are listening and or watching this podcast on. It really does help us to get this podcast out to more readers um, such as yourselves, and your support is always appreciated in another way of support if you are so inclined is to go to gsmcpodcast.info you can see that next to me there Uh, gsmcpodcast.info you can leave a tip or donation that really really helps the show it helps the entire network actually um, to get more content out i'm not sure if you've ever looked into the gsmc podcast network but we have around 800 podcasts and we've got a variety of topics there's lots of audiobooks there's classic radio shows and then we've got our gsmc originals as well in a whole bunch of topics that might be of interest to you so definitely look into some of our other podcasts and if you are interested it is um very very helpful if you go to g see i clicked i put my head the wrong way. If you go to gsmcpodcast.info, you can leave a tip or a donation. And I thank you in advance for any kind of support that you are willing to give. Thank you so much. As we get started, um, like I said, I hope your week is going well. My birthday was on Friday, as I mentioned in the last episode, and had a a quiet but a very nice day after I finished putting up the episode. Um, We did some things in the office. My hubby and I went for a five-mile walk with the dogs, which was great. It was beautiful. The weather has been amazing the last few days. It's uh, supposed to get let me, let me put this in your quotes, colder by the end of the week. And by colder, I mean today was 82 or so, 81, 82, and it's supposed to be 69 by Friday. <laughs> so, you know, not really cold, but uh, colder. Um, so we went for that walk. It was beautiful. And then um, a couple of friends came over and we made pizza and we played Cards Against Humanity and just laughed and talked and uh, had a wonderful day. And then the week, the rest of the weekend was quiet as well. And I can't complain about that. Did my author interview of which you are about to see and um, spent a very quiet day on Sunday cooking and hanging out with the hubby and the dogs. So, so good times. And now here we are. I hope um, that your weekend was as good and that your week is off to a great start. As we get started, um, I will say that I don't know where I was going with that sentence as we get started. (laughs) Let's get started. The author that I am speaking with today is author Garnet Kilburn Cohen. Let me get that image up for you so you can see uh, Garnet and the image of the book. There you go. There she is. And it's not the great, it's not a great author photo. I love that's from her website. And I just think it's It's wonderful. Um, And then the title of her book is Cravings. It is a collection of short stories. Let me go ahead and give you the description of that book. Again, this is Cravings by Garnet Kilburn Kilburn Cohen, excuse me. Opening with hors d'oeuvres and closing with a feast, the stories in Cravings pulse with longing, missed opportunities, recriminations, and joy. Garnet Kilberg Coburn leads readers through acutely crafted explorations of the way events shape and change our lives, sometimes for the better and sometimes in ways that haunt us forever. Love, friendship, childhood, parenthood, and leaving home, all of these experiences of desire, driven by the unrelenting passage of time, form the heart of this charismatic collection. Kilberg Cohen's captivating and vulnerable characters often recognize their shortcomings and past mistakes, but cannot always rise above them. One woman learns to forgive her husband's ex. Another fears her love of salty snacks caused a family tragedy. A stoic rural community drives a newcomer out of town. A young man's entire life is colored by a traumatic childhood event at a zoo. Focusing on the specific, unforgettable moments that reveal our connections to one another, Cravings offers an expansive vision of humanity that lingers long after the final page is turned. And so again, that is Cravings by Garnet Kilberg Cohen. And it's it's fun because uh, two 
not in a row, but uh, two weekends in a row, I've spoken with an author who writes short stories. And as you know, I've had a complicated relationship with the short story in the past, but they are definitely, um, I'm learning to appreciate them so much more. And whereas last weekend, last week's book did have some connections in the story, at least in the, the area that they took place, they all took place in or around the area that the author is from. These don't have that connectivity of place, but they all have that connectivity of desire or the main characters seeking something, wanting something, and how that shapes and alters their lives, their experiences, etc. They are a variety of different lengths. We talk about that a little bit in the interview, and I really appreciate the complexity of the characters. Garnet's really able to bring characters to life um, in with their nuanced and layers. And so, like I said, I appreciate the complexity of the characters within the confines of a short story. She really does a great job at bringing out those details and um, making those layers nuanced with the characters. So I really appreciate that. Uh, as always, if you're a fan of short stories, you should definitely check out the collection. But let's go ahead now and turn to the interview. Again, uh, if you haven't figured it out already, the book is Cravings. The author is Garnet Kilberg Cohen. And I'm going to go ahead and start the first segment. Hi, Garnet. Welcome to the podcast. Oh, thank you. I'm delighted to be here. Thank you for being here. Um, I'm excited to talk to you about your collection of short stories. Before we do that, though, if you wouldn't mind taking just a few moments to share a little bit about yourself so my listeners can get to know you. Okay. Um, well, I would say the main thing is uh, about me is I've always been a writer from the time I was quite young. But in my professional writing career, I got a bit of a late start because I had a baby when I was very young, 18. So I didn't finish college until my late 20s. But um, I've always done some kind of writing. I was a newspaper reporter for a while for a weekly newspaper. I was a copywriter for an ad agency. And um, our main client was Tombstone Pizza, so I ate a lot of pizza. Um, and I was sort of, I wanted to be a writer, but I wasn't sure what kind. And I was sort of fishing around and then settled on fiction writing um, because I think it had the most latitude, I think, of all the types of writing. Okay. Hey. Makes sense. Uh, you know, the, I talk to a lot of people who come to f fiction writing from s journalism or, you know, some, something along those lines. So it's it's very common. And I'm, I'm sure, you know, any any writing helps. So it's always good to to have the, the those different skills. Um, the book is called Cravings. Uh, it's a collection of short stories. Can you um, can you just talk about the, the collection a little bit? What was your inspiration for it? Where did you start? Okay, it's short stories, and here, there it is. Oh, I don't think you can see it that well, uh, but all right, never mind. Uh, but it, each story had a separate inspiration, and um, and they were written over a fairly long amount of time. And for example, one of the stories in the book. Uh, was inspired by uh, a news story I saw about a boy who fell, fell in a gorilla pit in a zoo. Um, I don't know if you remember that I story. Do. Yeah. And I wondered what it would be like to be him. And I knew nothing about the situation, but I, um, I just imagined what it would be like to be him and have his life afterwards. Uh, so sometimes they're inspired by something like that, sometimes by a memory, um, sometimes by an image I see. And But putting it into a book, I have a lot of short stories that aren't in this book. I try to find ones that had sort of a common theme to put together into this book. And what worked for a long time in the title before it came up with Cravings, uh, but every story, someone generally a main character wants 
something, wants to know something or wants to have something. Yeah. And um, I think the first the first story, um, the, when I started reading it, I thought, oh, cravings, that makes a lot of sense. That first story with the with the young the young girl and, and her her food cravings. And then the the other stories you might they might not be quite as obvious, but the, yeah, what you said, everybody, everybody does want something. Um, so you, you talked about a little bit of where your inspiration comes from. Um, when you sit down to write a short story, do you pretty, do you usually just have that starting off point or do you kind of have the whole arc of the story in mind? How, how does writing short stories work for you? I usually, uh, just have the starting off point or I have something I want to write around and when things are going really well, at some point in the story, something happens that surprises me. And that makes the characters become real and alive. And then the story takes off. I don't usually know the endings when I start. I have from time to time. But usually I it feels more authentic to me to go through the process of um what's happening uh to the character but when something takes me by surprise that the character does then the character becomes real for me and the story really takes off yeah and just a ballpark how many words generally is a short story is there is there a, a ballpark or how does is that different for every story ballpark um it's i would say 5000 words okay. um and uh, short stories, and one of the reasons I say that is I publish a lot in literary magazines, and a lot of times lit literary magazines have a limit of 5,000 or 6,000 words. Um, and uh, there's different forms of short stories, longer ones too, but I generally feel that that's about what it takes me to really develop a character and a situation and bring it to some sort of resolution. So I would say about 5,000 words. I have one I just finished, a story I just finished yesterday, and it's 4,300 words. So. Okay. <laughs> Um, and I ask because there's one story toward the end of the collection that's much, much shorter than the others. So uh, I think it's called Jump, if I'm remembering correctly. Yeah, um, can you talk correct. a little bit about that one? That one was inspired by a photograph I saw. And it was two little girls with a jump rope in an alley somewhere or uh, back behind factories. And I just wondered about the little girl's lives and how they happened to get to the place where they were. And um, and I liked the girls and I liked the story, but it didn't move beyond, um, it didn't move beyond whatever it is, probably 600 words or something along those lines. And there is a whole category, as I'm sure you know, of short stories called flash fiction. And those are usually 1,500 words or less. Okay. And then there's longer forms. The last story in the book is the longest story in the book called Feast. And it's one of my favorites. And it could be, with a little push, it could be a novella. Um, but it's still in the short story range. I mean, there's not a solid rule, but... <laughs> right. You know, I realized as I was reading the collection and then again as Garnet was speaking that I don't think I've ever asked an author or nor have I looked up the standard, if there is a standard, uh, which there apparently is not a hard and fast standard for how long, how many words a short story should be. I guess I've just never looked it up. So uh, this is why I love this 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 podcast, because I get to ask authors questions and I get to find out things that I didn't know, or I maybe didn't even know I would, I should look up. So <laughs> I, I love learning new things. Uh, it's time for our first break of this episode. When we come back, um, we will be talking about um, how Garnet knows when a short story is complete or not, and we'll also be talking about character development. So stay tuned. You are listening to and or watching the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and I will be right back. Let's 
go. I wake up to a little bit of drool on my pillow, feel like it's gonna be a bad day. Yeah, I'm tired of shit, and the coffee ain't hit yet. Damn, ain't that great. I don't wanna go to work, cause my boss is a jerk, and I'm not even that paid. I need a change in my life, cause I don't feel alive, and there's nothing that makes me happy. Oh. Hold my beer for a minute I'm about to quit my job Cash in for a ticket I'm going on a trip And I don't plan to visit I'm gonna stay there Till I feel like I'm winning all And this is just the beginning I need a big change Help me feel like living I need a big swing Home runs I'm hitting And I'll never look back Moving on till I get it all And we all got dreams We all want things But what you gonna do for How you gonna move for What you gonna be And do you believe Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast. I am speaking today with author Garnet Kilberg Cohen about her short story collections Craving, bef- Cravings. Excuse me. Before the break, we were talking about the length of short stories and how that can actually vary quite a bit more than I really had ever thought about. So again, love learning new things. As we get ready for the second segment, I just want to remind you once more that if you are a fan of this podcast and you would like to do more than just liking and subscribing uh, to the podcast to help it get out to more readers such as yourselves, you can go to gsmcpodcast.info as you see in the graphic next to me, and you can leave tips, donations, and help the podcast get out again to more readers such as yourselves. Once again, I thank you for all the support that you have given me over the years and any support that you choose to give me in the future, whether that's a like, a follow, a subscribe, um, a comment, a review, or going to gsmcpodcast.info and leaving a tip or a donation. Thank you so very much. Um, we are going to go ahead now and return to the interview with Garnet. Um, so let me get that going for you. So you must have to really rely on just your your writing gut, if you will, or your, your writing intuition to know when a story feels complete to you. Is that accurate? That, that is completely accurate. It's a lot of it's an instinct, but I have a general feel in my mind for the feel and shape of what a particular story should be given the character, the situation, and how it's moving for me as I get into it. And you mentioned that you, you usually have the, the jumping off point, um, maybe not the ending. So what about character development? Do the, the, I would assume maybe characters develop as you write? They do usually develop as I write. And, some, and that, of course, as you know, is really important because the character needs to be believable and authentic. And that's where I find a story might fail is if the character is not becoming real to me and separate from me. Um, I, I want to feel like the character is a person. And of course there are autobiographical elements, but I want the person to be separate from me. I mean, those two little girls in the story jump, they were nothing like me. Um, They weren't there for long, only about 600 words, but they were nothing like me. Um, The girl in the first story who wanted the olives, she was a little like me, but then when she changed and became someone I didn't really know, that's when the story took off more for me. Um, And is there one story in particular that that is more autobiographical or that they're, they're just elements of you throughout. I think there's elements of me throughout. Um, and I don't think anyone could write fiction and not have some biographical elements because you might just be writing something, someone goes in the hospital and you think, oh, when I was in the hospital, I remember seeing this. Or, so it doesn't always have to do with the story, the situation, but it just something you remember that you use for ver- verisimilitude or something. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, um, I guess sometimes when there's there's a story, and this isn't autobiographical at all because it didn't happen, but the story Ogden, Ohio, I know I read 
I was a teenage mother in a very small town. So some of the things are autobiographical. The story itself never happened, mm -hmm. but I drew on elements from that particular time in my life. Yeah. Um, and I am glad that some of those elements did not happen to you. <laughs> there's some <laughs> there's some drama in that story, but yes, um, yes, there is some drama in that story. Thank you. <laughs> but also, yeah, I grew up in a very small town and understand that it can that there there are definite aspects of life in a small town that you don't get other places. What state was it where you I grew up in Montana, in western Montana. Oh, so oh. Wow, my, my hometown is about a thousand people. My husband refuses to believe that. He insists that there's nowhere near a thousand people. <laughs> that's what the census says. So, so no, I believe you. My brother lives in a small town in Montana. Oh, where is um, he? Yes. So, and that's I, actually a, a story set in a small town in Montana. Was that based or kind of inspired? That was inspired by my brother and inspired by being an. I have to say small towns are all alike in some ways, but a Montana small town is different from an Ohio small town. Mm -hmm. And um, I was sort of fascinated by the people in his small town. And again, the story is fiction, but, um, but small towns just have this world of um, their own and where it's a whole world. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, there's always there's always different characters that are very interesting in small towns. Now, my husband grew up in Ohio, so we have had conversations about small town Ohio versus small town Montana. <laughs> so, oh, funny, and funny. there are there are definite differences. Um, so the there yeah there was the Montana connection, and then you have a story with um a, a kind of a secondary character, but uh, a little girl named Risa, and my youngest niece's name is Risa. So those were the two stories. This was the first time I've have encountered a Risa in fiction. So. She was she's 13 and she was very excited that you named oh, it there was a character. I'm sorry the character had kind of a tragic uh <laughs> circumstances, but you know, when I was a little girl and I read stories and read books, I kind of like characters with tragic uh, circumstances. They seemed glamorous at the time to me when I was young, before I knew the reality of right. you know things, right. but um yeah. Yeah. Um, any particular types of research that you did for any of the stories that uh, was, um, did you learn anything interesting through research? I'm trying to think if, you know, I, I did, I always do a little tiny bits of research while I'm writing. Um, but they're really, because I don't write historical fiction and I don't write fiction way out of the realm of what I personally know, um, I don't usually have to do a lot of research. But for instance, when I wrote the story about the boy who fell in the gorilla pit, um, I looked up silverback gorillas and I looked at, and I didn't need most of that information, mm -hmm. but it, it made me feel like I was being a little more authentic than I would have felt otherwise. Yeah. Um, I haven't looked it up. I'm trying to think of any. Oh, and I did the story with Risa. I did look up different diseases mm -hmm. to see what disease would be close to her i didn't want to give her a specific disease but i wanted it to be in the realm of being real you know how in old novels people sometimes have these really mysterious feigning diseases or something that you read now and you think that couldn't have been real um but yeah. so i wanted at least to uh seem sort of real connected to something mm -hmm. yeah do you um do you write longer forms of fiction as well or mostly short stories? I write mostly short stories, but I also um, I also write nonfiction. I, these days I write almost as much nonfiction as fiction. Um, and I've published that pretty widely, but I don't have a book of nonfiction yet um, because most of my pieces of nonfiction are short too. They're, you know, around the same length as my short story. So I have to figure out a way to shape some of them and get them into a collection. 
I have been working, I have a novel I discarded and I've been working on a novel, but because until just May of last year, I was teaching full time. Um, the only time I ever had to work on it really was the summer. And then at the end of the summer, I just kind of disappear. It would just kind of disappear. And I never, so I'm hoping uh, to get back and start on a, on the restart this novel that I was working on. Um, but I will say my favorite uh, form of fiction is the short story. Um, but I also know that the favorite form of many readers is the novel. Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, and so, and I would like to have a novel. So I'm going to try and get back, back into that soon, soon. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What about short stories do you think draws you to writing in that format? A couple of things about short stories. I think that they're the... When I think of a novel and it's telling the story of a person or people, there's this arc and that's supposed to cover the main part of a person's life or a person's life or a huge event. Um, but I think the way our, our life is really made up or people's lives are really um, constructed are in stories. They're episodic. They don't... Um, um, there's periods in your life that are very intense and periods in your life that something happens and everything centers around that thing that happens. Um, and if, for instance, if there's a death, there might be a three month period where everything centers around that death. But in a novel, it's like, it feels almost like the whole life centers around it. the arc. It makes mm. it seem like that's the main event of the life. So I think it's a, a truer form to representing people. Um, but at the same time, I love the compression of it, what you can do with language and how you can experiment with a short story that, I mean, you can experiment with the novel and you can use compressed language in a novel too. But it's, it's uh almost required in a short story so right. um, that's what I what I like about short stories well you have to compress it because you're trying to get your your point conveyed you're trying to to get the feel and the heart of the story conveyed in a much smaller space so you you can't you can't take paragraphs and paragraphs to describe oh, no, I don't know no. a tree <laughs> Yeah, or the person can't just go to the mall and hang out and have nothing happen and go home. Right. Not that that happens in many novels I know of, but um, <laughs> but they, they, you know, sometimes they're, you're reading a novel and you think, um, was there an editor that thought that this four pages <laughs> of whatever it is was was necessary? <laughs> you know, I sometimes right. wonder. Um, and I do read novels sometimes, and find myself like skimming a few pages but i you can't do that with a short story or if you do you realize you got to go back and reread it because right. you miss something. right but sometimes it's also nice to have a short story especially a collection of short stories because you can sit down you might not have a lot of time and you can read the the entirety in this in one sitting and you know you, you can then go go about your day and you you've, you've completed it I feel I agree with you. I feel it's really satisfying to complete something. And I kind of look at my days and that's how the days seem worthwhile. What things did I complete? Did I did I do exercise? Did I write? Did I call someone I've been meaning to call for a long time and haven't done it? And reading something uh, like a short story I can feel really good about that. I finished that short story and I can go about my day thinking about it. So that's good too. I've been laughing because in in, in April so far, my my interviews have been, I, I spoke with um, another short story author last Saturday. And then on Sunday, it was epic fantasy. So that was three books totaling over 1800 pages. Um, so I had short stories and then epic fantasy and now short stories with you. And then next weekend again is 18 is, is epic fantasy. And that book is over a thousand pages for just one book. <laughs> wow. So, and do you I'm, read I'm very, the whole thing? Do you read the whole thousand? I'm working pages? on it. 
<laughs> but I'm, I'm very grateful that I also had short stories interspersed in there. It kind of gives your brain a, a, a different kind of, of rest. Yes, yes, I completely understand. Because yeah. when I taught, sometimes I teach novels or I teach other things. And a short story. I also like short stories because you can read them twice. And usually when you start a short story, uh, you don't know why the stuff that's happening at the beginning is happening. But then if you've read very carefully, you might know at the end, but you might have forgotten the beginning. But if you go back and read it again, it's like, you know, when you see a movie a second time, mm -hmm. and you think, oh, I missed this in the opening the first time, but this is clearly foreshadowing this or this is clearly a symbol of what happened and it's not it's lovely to make those connections I love yep. making those connections and you almost need to read it twice and it's a lot harder to read a thousand page book twice yes uh, <laughs> certainly not back to back <laughs> no yes yes yeah. certainly not um, okay Actually, I can think of one time in my life, at least one time, maybe there's more, but I can think of one where I did read an eight or 900 page book all in one sitting just in the course of the day because it was the end of a series and I had been waiting for it forever and I was so excited. And then because I read it so fast, I read the last page, sat for a minute, turned to the first page. So I did read um, a nine, eight or 900 page book back to back, but this is not my norm and um, I'm not... I'm not upset with long books, just sometimes when you're trying to do author interviews and you've got lots and lots and lots and lots of pages, two weekends in a row, it it, it adds up. So I'm not, I'm not dissing next weekend's author. Please, please don't get mad at me. Don't send me nasty emails about how I don't like long books or whatever. I don't know. Let's take a break, okay? We're going to take that break and when we come back... Um, Garnet will be talking about how she approaches short stories, the writing of short stories in terms of publication. Um, are they part of a collection? Does she write them for specific publications, etc.? So stay tuned. You are listening and or watching the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and I will be right back. For the best and latest podcasts available anywhere, go to the podcast app on your cell phone and type in GSMC to access free content-rich podcasts on health and wellness, book reviews, sports, entertainment, relationships, social media, movies, technology, finance, and even weird news. Subscribe and download the GSMC Podcast Network's family of shows, available everywhere podcasts are found. Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast and my interview with author Garnet Kilberg Cohen. Uh, before the break, we were talking about reading short stories and reading novels, uh, especially in this case, epic fantasy, uh, as we were talking about, and just the different ways that you might approach reading a short story collection as opposed to reading a very large novel and how short stories, you know, obviously you can read them out of order. You can, you don't have to read straight through a collection. You can, you can read a short story and then immediately go back and read it a second time. So a different way of reading, which can be good, uh, different ways of engaging our brains, right? So let's go ahead and return now to the interview with Garnet. Um, when you write short stories, are you usually, um, you mentioned you publish in a lot of literary magazines, those sorts of things. Is that usually your goal or do you have, you, do you write stories that you are specifically thinking of for a collection or talk to me a little bit about that process? Right now, I've just, since this collection came out in October, I've written three short stories. I'm just finishing. And I don't have a particular goal in mind for them. I'm thinking when my time frees up a little bit more, I'm going to get back to the novel. But I've had some inspirations for them. And now that I have three, I'm thinking, ah, maybe, uh, maybe I, I need to think about getting these in a collection. But my goal is always just on the piece I'm working on. And 
and getting it published someplace really good where I know people will read it or it might get some attention. Um, and, but I also uh, realize at this stage in my life that there's like four places where you will get attention in the whole country. I mean, you get attention in a hundred places if you're just looking to get attention from the writing world and not people beyond um, other writers and editors. Um, but there's only like four places that people will come across your stories who are not writers. I mean, I had a nonfiction piece, a short nonfiction piece in The New Yorker. And the morning that came out, I just got emails from people who were non-writers. I saw your piece. I saw, and I thought that doesn't happen when it's, even when it's a really good literary magazine, that mm -hmm. doesn't happen. So that, that was um, really nice. But there's also this thing about, writing in a kind of obscurity that frees you up a little bit. I mean, if you get in a good literary magazine, you it's, you know, it's, it's very nice and you can give it to people and show it to people. And if you're in academia, like I was, I'm not now, um, but you get credit for it and all of that, but it's not quite the same as just people saying to you, wow, I saw this. I, I found this on my own. Yeah. You you were trying to show the book earlier and um I will have it on on screen for the oh, people okay. who are watching <laughs> which will be great. But um your your cover art and I was looking at your website uh before the interview your your cover art is always a little uh it's it's different than some of the the cover art that I see right now that's out. So do you have input into your cover art or how does that creative process I work? Some input into I've had some input into all the cover art except my first book. Um, and this one, they had, uh, they did a cover which was very nice for the book. Um, and, but it had a child on it. And I I wrote and they, they sent me the cover art and they said, blah, blah, blah. And uh, hope you like it. We think this is the final. And I, and I wrote back and I said, I, you know, I like it. I like the art, but I just don't know if you want to have, we want to have a book with a picture of a child and the word cravings on it. Mm. Um, and, and they agree with me right away. And I said, uh, um, I said, there's a lot of parties in the book. Maybe there could be a picture of a party on the cover. And this, the cover of this book does, um, um, have a party that's in the book it's not a it's not captured exactly how it's presented in the book but it's similar to how it's presented in the book and I, at one time I was because there are a lot of parties in the book I was going to call the book the landscape of parties or something like that and then I changed it to cravings after talks with the publisher and all of that but I've had some input into the covers but not a lot mm -hmm. uh, so yeah I always I always project my own emotions on that and wonder how much I you know I, like I I feel like I would want I would potentially have to very very consciously let go <laughs> of not being able to control the whole process <laughs> Well, I know, and I did even with this cover, which I liked very much. Um, when I first saw it, and I saw the woman on the front, I thought, "Well, I don't have short blonde hair and a beautiful long neck like she has." And then I thought, "This is fiction. You don't, to, you don't want it to look like you on the cover." Um, so, yeah, I will say I've had to let go of something with every every cover even though i've had input in all of sure. them yeah are there any um any other excuse me any other writings that you would like to highlight during our time together um i suppose you could look at of my writings you could look at my website which is garnet cohen author um and there's a few writings on that um, that 
there's links to a few writings on that. Um, and I also, there's links to my other three books on that. So those books could be purchased from the website as well. Um, but right now I'm not particularly thinking of anything other than the books I have out or the right. selected writings I put on the, on the website. Yep. Okay. Um, you mentioned at the beginning that you've always written and you've, you, you know, throughout your career, you've written in various capacities. So what was the final thing or the, uh, what, what was that moment where you thought, you know what, it's time now I'm going to try to write in this case, fiction uh, for publication. I guess I was talking about small towns again. I was a reporter at uh, in a weekly newspaper in Ohio and it was my second year there and, you know, not that much happened, um, but it was the same events the next year that there had been my first year. There was an ice cream social. There were the fire department go out and test their hoses. And you cover all these things and um, and it's the, the sameness of them, which wouldn't be true in all journalism at all if you mm -hmm. were in a different place. But the other thing that bothered me was I, I would quote people and I thought of things they could have said that was better than what they said, but I was really aware that I wasn't allowed to just right. make up quotes and put <laughs> them in the, in, in the newspaper article. And so I was feeling really constrained. And then I was beginning to question myself, did they really say that or did I make that up? Um, and I thought, ah, oh, this, this is not working for me anymore. Um, I mean, I always sort of wanted to write fiction, but I was just as ha thought I would be just as happy as a journalist or um, but I really like making things up. I think that's <laughs> I think that's what changed. Yes. Well, I'm glad that you decided to go and write fiction and not create a scandal for yourself. <laughs> Just... <laughs> yeah, yeah. It would have been a small scandal since I was in a small town paper, but it wouldn't have been like one of those big ones where they somebody's made up a whole story and it's in the New York Times or something. Right. But still. But it would have yeah. been a small town and everybody would have known oh, and everybody right. would have talked about it. And as we said earlier, there's a world of its own in a small yes. town. So, yes, yes absolutely. Um, we still have five minutes left in this section, session, but we have a few more questions. So uh, why don't we go ahead and, and log out and log back in and then we can we don't have to rush through the final questions. OK. All right. So um, I will leave and I will I just I'm going to hit leave and then I'll come back. Yep. Sounds great. Thank you so much. OK, thank you. Okay. When you take time to read, um, just for you, uh, what are your favorite authors and some of your favorite genres? Um, I, I, as I mentioned, I like link short stories. I really love Alice Munro. I mean, she has short stories that just you, you know, you're reading along and it pulls the rug out from under you. You go down and then it pulls it out again. And I love the way the connections are made in her link stories, um, um, particularly Beggar Maid. Um, uh, I liked Olive Kitteridge, the connections made. She's not a very pleasant character, but there's, uh, but you know, you will read a short story that's whole and stands completely on its own. And then the next story on it, book and the book will stand completely on its own and there will be a reference to a character that occurred in the first story which works perfectly well in the story you're reading but you know so much more about that character because you read a whole story about the character um uh jennifer egan also uh visit from the goon squad and i really like to read um I like to read mysteries too. Um, I like it if they're slightly more literary mysteries than, you know, just uh, page turner mysteries. Mm -hmm. But um, I think mysteries, a lot of times the authors really work on the plot. And, um, and that's something I don't pay that much attention to when I'm writing the plot. 
But I think you have to have some sort of structure or scaffolding to, and to see something that's so well plotted as some of the mysteries I read, I think just kind of internally helps me with um, um, uh, having some kind of structure that's more than I might naturally um, move toward. Yeah. Um love hearing what authors are reading one because my tbr list is clearly never long enough <laughs> but also too i love hearing what authors are reading because i love hearing about how what they're reading can affect or influence what they're writing and not maybe influence in terms of plot or characters or stories along those lines but how they write or how they develop characters or how they develop their plot so i think it's fascinating hopefully you do too we are going to take our final break of this podcast when we come back we'll be talking about uh we'll be talking to i'll be talking to garnet about her advice for aspiring authors so stay tuned you are listening to and or watching the gsmc book review podcast and i will be right back <laughs> Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast and the conclusion of my interview with Garnet Kilberg Cohen. Before the break, I was asking about what she likes to read in her spare time, and that and the way she answered that question actually reminded me that I had skipped a question, and so we are going to pick up with the um, advice for aspiring authors question. Let me just restart that video. And actually, that that reminded me. I, I I skipped over a question when you were talking about scaffolding and and learning from other writers. Do you have advice for someone who thinks that they might like to try their hand, their hand at writing short stories? Um, one thing I would say is, don't worry about having a full idea. Just sit down and start writing. Maybe it's a memory. Maybe it's an image. Um, uh, the the short story um, um, oh now the now the name is a scale oh it's wheels that short story mm. and it's basically about an old man but it starts with when the old man's a little boy and he's just pushing cars through dirt you know how little kids do and I have a young grandson and I was watching him push his cars through the dirt. And I thought that's so interesting how so, so many boys do that and, you know, kids, but boys in particular. And so I just started writing about that. And that took me to thinking, where do they go next in, with wheels and cars and bicycles and all of that kind of stuff? So don't put it off and think, I'll wait till I have a fuller idea or I'll wait till I know what's going to happen. And when you're writing, if you get stuck, the two best things I think to do are either to read, because that sparks, always sparks ideas for me. It might just be a single word. Um, or to go for a long walk, because that's sort of meditative and gets your mind kind of moving. Mm-hmm. Thank you. When you said uh, small children pushing a, a car through the dirt, I was I was actually on a walk with my husband the other day and um, <laughs> there was a family near us and they were they were speaking French. But um, the little boy had a tractor that he was he was playing with and 
he kept saying vroom vroom and I thought vroom vroom apparently the French little French boys say it too. <laughs> yeah that's exactly what my grandson would say and sometimes he'd say it so loud I'd have to go oh, quiet down but vroom. Yeah. Um, but, but no that that is funny that it, it's the same in French <laughs> yeah I I learned something new so. <laughs> um so you we've we mentioned your website and you've given that address but if you can uh just remind people uh your website and also um any social media that you're active on in case people want to learn more about you or your books um i i'm on instagram but i'm not that active on it the best place probably to look and you can contact me through it is my website which is garnet cohen and um um, I think it's Garnet Cohen author. I know it's Garnet Cohen author. It's got to be dot com is the next thing. Um, but if you put Garnet Cohen author in, you're, you're mm-hmm. fine. There aren't that many of us Garnet Cohens around. Um, and But I'm not that active on other social media. I'm on Facebook and I'm on Instagram. And on the website, I sometimes post when I'm going to have a reading it would have a reading coming up or something but people can always contact me through the website as well okay perfect thank you um garnet we've talked about a few different things but is there anything that we have not covered that you wanted to make sure you had a chance to highlight um um nothing is coming to mind right away Except I just want to say uh, thank you so much for reading the book, for having me on the show, and for reading it so carefully. Um, I have been on now because I'm promoting this new book, Cravings. I've been on maybe eight podcasts, and I would say half of them, it becomes clear to me at some point that the person hasn't read the book, Mm -hmm. uh, which is okay. I don't call them out on it or anything. But I just love it when you said, well, when you make a reference to a particular thing in a story, and I think that's a podcaster who's doing her work. And she really, that, and the fact that you're reading thousand page books. That's <laughs> I'm <great>. trying. <laughs> but no, that's a real journalist who's doing the background information. Although somebody recent to- recently told me, Larry King never read the books of people who mm. were on. But of course, he always had people had big scandals in their lives. So yeah. he could just focus on their scandals instead of what they wrote. Um, yeah. But I guess that's probably not what you wanted to hear about. Oh, about no, I appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate anything else. But, um, but I'm just, and I'm just excited that there are podcasts out there, that there is a new avenue, particularly as there seem to be fewer printed reviews. It's mm-hmm. nice to have a, a new avenue. I am also in the fall, I'm going to be review editor for another Chicago magazine, okay. which is, is an online magazine. I've been an editor on uh, of some kind, fiction editor, nonfiction editor, on a number of literary magazines. Wonderful. Um, yeah, that would be, I, I would, I would imagine that that would be a, a, a different, a different avenue, but still kind of helps you in that creative process, but gives you a different way of looking at writing. It does. And you, and one of the things I like about writing reviews are most, I will mostly be assigning reviews, but is when I'm writing a review is I so much more carefully read, um, what what I'm reading, I'm paying so much more attention to the sentence structure and everything else. Do you write? Um, no, no. I mean, yeah, you, a little bit, but not. <laughs> but, right, right. Yeah. Okay. Right. Um, uh, I, I'm 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 definitely a reader. I've been a reader. I've always been a reader. So wonderful, wonderful. Yeah, thank you. Well, I want to say thank you for taking the time out of your day. Um, It's the weekend, so I appreciate you taking the time to talk to me about the short story collection and writing. I really appreciate it. Uh, Well, uh, thank you so much for having me.
Thank you again to Garnet for joining me to talk about the collection and writing and everything else that we covered. I so appreciate it. As I said at the beginning, if you are a fan of short stories or you, like me, are evolving your relationship with short stories, then you should def definitely check out this collection, maybe some of Garnet's other collections as well. And um, of course, you can go to her website and learn more about her, find where else you might be able to read some of her short stories etc. So thank you to Garnet for joining me for this episode. Thank you as always to you, my listeners. Um, it's such a pleasure to get to meet so many authors and to be able to share those conversations with you, my listeners, and now viewers. I really appreciate all the authors that I've met. I really appreciate you who have been with me since the beginning, listening and for a long time, just listening, now watching perhaps. And I just as much appreciate anyone who is new, maybe who's just found the podcast and is getting to know me and maybe getting to know some new authors through this podcast. Um, I hope that you will join me for the next interview. Uh, let me just go ahead and get that set up. I will be speaking with author David Skidmore. This is epic fantasy. As I mentioned in, in earlier when the conversation with Garnet, we are talking about his book, Aelin. Not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly. It's always interesting with fantasy if you're pronouncing words and names correctly. Aelin is one of the characters in the book, so I may or may not be pronouncing that correctly. This is um, the second in a series, the Ever Branching Tree series. The uh, One of the main characters is Aelin. The other main character is, I believe, this woman who is sitting by the fire. Her name is Megan. She is from our world. Aelin is from a different world, but of course those worlds collide as uh, Megan and finds herself thrust into a situation that she is not expecting to find herself in and finds that she has abilities she never expected. So, you know, you, you if you are a fan of fantasy, you probably are hearing some of those tropes that you are familiar with and probably love to see in your fantasy. So um, I hope that you will join me for that conversation with David on the next episode. I'll be speaking with him over the weekend and that will be uh, up next Tuesday uh, for the next interview. So please join me for that. In the meantime, and actually, if that, you that reminded are me, I, 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 I skipped this, over a question when you were talking. If you are a fan of this podcast, and you have not done so already, please like, subscribe, and follow on whatever platform you are listening or watching the podcast on. That is helpful. You can also leave a review. That can be written. It can be starred. It depends on, again, the platform uh, of which you are consuming this podcast. Every little bit helps to get this podcast out to more readers and to people who are looking for new authors and maybe looking for new books and new series and um, or just love books and love authors and love the craft of writing. So thank you for that. You can also follow the podcast on social media. It is on Facebook, X, Instagram, and TikTok. I say it every week. I mean it every week. I love hearing from listeners. So if you are following the podcast, um, great. Leave me a comment. Tell me what you're reading tell me what you think of the interviews tell me if you've read any of the authors with whom i'm speaking or maybe you were inspired to pick up a new book and uh, a new author so yeah just find me it's the podcast but find me on social media and tell me what's going on in your reading life i again hope that you are having a wonderful week i hope that week continues to go well Regardless of what is going on in your week, I always hope that you have plenty of time to get yourself lost in a good book. Thank you so much. Let's go. I wake up to a little bit of drool on my pillow, feel like it's gonna be a bad day. Yeah, I'm tired of shit, and the coffee ain't hit yet. Damn, ain't that great. I don't want to go to...